Okay, chaps, we'll have a look at the results from the um, agarose gel we ran the other day to look at DNA fragments produced from a plasmid P glow after digestion with two restriction enzymes as both single digest and a double digest. But first, we'll have a look at the molecular weight standard that we ran on the gel. Now, these are DNA fragments of known molecular weight, and we can see. It's a commercially available one called Hyperladder 1, and there are DNA fragments from 10,000 base pairs to 200 base pairs. So you can see these quite easily. Here, and here, and here. And you'll note in this DNA standard ladder, if you like, we start at 10,000 with quite an intense band at the top here, and we go eight, six, five, four, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, one thousand. And note the one and a half thousand base pairs is quite intense, and that's deliberate so that you can see where you are on your gel. If some of these bands have electrophoresed on the gel, off off the gel, or the gel hasn't been electrophoresed very far. So if we have a look at your uh, results from gel 5, as an example, we'll do Okay, so, on this slide, I'll just change the colour of my pen, and we'll then have a look at this. Okay, so we can see our molecular weight standards just here, and they're not quite as nice as they look in the picture that we previously looked at. Um, but we can see that this is 1,000 base pairs, Oops. just here, and up here we've got 10, 10, and 8,000 base pairs very close together. And then we go 6, 5, 4, and then the rest as we see. And this is 1 and this is one and a half, this is two, two and a half. Our DNA fragments are electrophoresed. If we look at this, the, the uncut plasmid DNA that we put on the gel just here, what we see is two bands, one very intense one and one kind of fuzzy one. So there and there. Now, DNA when it comes out of the E. coli and it's extracted is in what's called a supercoiled form. And supercoiled Plasmid DNA is a bit like having a rubber band. You wind it up and uh, wind it up, and it becomes a rather small, tight ball. This consequently electrophoreses through the gel very quickly. So we go from high molecular weight to low molecular weight, and you can see it moves quite quickly. But often in plasmid DNA extracted from cells, there'll be multiple forms. So it won't all be supercoiled. You'll get different. Uh, forms of plasmid DNA including supercoiled and they include open circular now that's plasmid DNA which is simply circular it's not supercoiled but it is circular and then sometimes you'll get broken um, fragments of plasmid including uh, linear and also you'll get concatenars where you get multiple plasmids joined within the cell and they'll actually form Catamers build because they'll be joined to each other. Uh, so, in this digest, it's predominantly supercoiled, but there's maybe some open circular there, and maybe some catameric forms in larger uh, in the larger band there. So, if we have a look at our samples, these three samples here, this gives us a pretty good idea of the digest that we'd expect, as do the second set of samples just here and these are probably not too bad. This one here is a partial digest of the plasmid DNA because we can see we can have some remaining supercoiled DNA here. Uh, so it means the plasmid's not quite well digested by the individual enzyme here. But let's look at this one first. This is plasmid DNA digested with ECOR1. We only see one band so we've converted all this over here to all this here. So this is the linear size of P-glow. And if you have a quick look at the DNA bands here, we can see that this band 
just above it, just here, is 6kb, approximately. And then we get 5 and 4 and so on. And then we've got the band next to it, which represents a DNA fragment cut, but which is P-glow cut with the restriction enzyme ECOR5. And although there's more of it there, the size is pretty much the same. Now, when we cut the plasmid with two enzymes, if we imagine having a plasmid cut with one enzyme, we'd expect two bands. If we cut the plasmid with two enzymes, we'd expect two bands. Sorry, I should have joined that together. So we get this, this one and this one. And they electrophorese to this point and this point. So if we work out the size of the DNA bands we get from our circular piece of DNA, both from the linear, linear cut with single enzymes and both these two here, um, we can see that we can work out the size of the plasmid in total, its circular size, and the individual size of these two fragments. And what we can draw is a restriction map a bit like this plasmid here and with locations of the enzymes restriction size relative to each other. So that's what we want you to do in the practical report. What you need to do is to work out the size of these DNA bands here and here and here and be able to create a restriction enzyme map for the plasmid. How do you work these out? Well, you need to plot a graph of the distance move from the origin. So it's quite difficult to see on a gel where the DNA started from um, under this ultraviolet light. So if we drew a line across there and said, OK, well, let's say our DNA started here. Um, we measure the distance between the distance the band has moved from the origin, so we've got one for a 10,000 base pair band, got one for our 8,000, one for our 6,000, one for our 5,000. We measure them in millimetres and we plot the distance moved in millimetres by the log of the molecular weight. And we draw what's called a standard curve, and from that standard curve we can work out what the size of these different DNA fragments are. So what I want you to see and do, do when you do that um, practical report is to draw that standard curve of the molecular weight or the distance moved against log of the molecular weight in base pairs. And what you'll get is a bit of a graph like this for each point on the graph draw a straight line through it and you can do that in Excel and when you want to work out the size of these unknown bands here we simply measure the distance moved by the bands go from the axis here to where a straight line intersects the line of best fit and then we draw down and we read the log of the, base, uh, log of the molecular weight in base pairs and if we do the inverse log of that, that will tell us the size in base pairs. And we can do that for all these bands on this gel here. So, <coughs> hopefully you can have a go with that. So, on the gel here, we see this group of bands here are okay. This set of data is okay. These are okay apart from the, this, these bands here which probably come from the supercoiled form of the plasmid, um, which is still exist in that digest. Again, we've got some funny things going on here. These two, these two digests look okay. There is some partial digestion here of these bands, but it's not, not exactly what we'd predict. So there's some supercoiled here. Um, these two digests are incomplete. This double digest seems okay by the looks of it. So if you look at your results on your gels, have a look at your DNA digests worked. If they didn't, then simply 
report that you're going to use somebody else's results, perhaps these here, um, but also show your uh, data in your practical report. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.